Good afternoon, everyone. This is Rafi Gutierrez on another episode of Crossroads of Faith. Before anything else, I want to introduce my my guest today, Yuri, who is one of my fur babies, and this is actually the the dog or my my pet who sleeps with us in the bed. She is really a, a very special person in my life. I don't actually look at her as uh, just a dog. She is quite, she's actually more important than many people, many human beings uh, in my life. So I thought about uh, bringing her to the episode today to emphasize a very important point or question that I want to ask uh, the viewers. Uh, and before I continue, I just want to give a shout out to Somebody who has been commenting on practically all my videos, and that is no other than Neo Magnon. Uh, I want to thank you for your comments and really providing deeper insight. And uh, I enjoy the wonderful engagement and exchanges we have in the in the comments. So, without further ado, let me introduce my topic. Why I, I brought uh, Yuri with me. And this topic today is a little bit different from what I've been talking about because in the last episodes, I've, I've been talking about uh, God and belief and religion. Today, I want to challenge, in particular, the concept of rebirth in the teachings of mainstream Buddhism. So when I say challenge, I am not saying that I am questioning or <laughs> trying to debunk it. I am simply trying to gain deeper insight from those who, who are watching this video and perhaps those who are more uh, attuned with the teachings of the, the Buddha and Buddhism. So I brought Yuri because in, in, Buddhist, in Buddhism, it is believed that when we, when we pass, when, uh, when a being passes, we actually, we actually continue on not a soul because there there is no entity or soul in in the teachings of buddhism but a group of collective consciousness memories habits karma continue on that creates a new life form so that life form might actually be in this particular case a dog so my topic my, my topic my very long introduction or segue to the the topic is Is rebirth justified? Okay. Is rebirth justified? When I say is rebirth justified, because a, a few, it's been a few weeks actually since I have been thinking about what I was going to talk this week uh, to be a little bit more different from my usual talks. If rebirth is the continuation of or progression from another life. And let's say Yuri was in another life, another was in a human form, and this life takes a form of a dog. How how is she supposed to move forward in the in the chain of of samsara? Or in this particular case, how does she evolve spiritually if she is a dog? Clearly, I think she's a little bit smarter than most other dogs I know because she can, she can follow basic commands. She, she, knows her, she knows where to do her, her, her thing in the morning and when she goes. She's very, very disciplined. When I tell her to stop barking, she stops barking. So as you can see, she's a very, very tame dog. And this dog breed, uh, Pomeranians, they're very, very feisty and noisy. So as you've probably seen, since the start of the video, she hasn't even barked. She's just wondering what, what on earth is happening, right? So she's a very sweet dog, okay? So my question, to, especially to fellow Buddhists, is if Yuri were to become human again in a succeeding life, based on the doctrine of rebirth or teachings of rebirth, how will she actually progress or evolve to becoming human if in her dog consciousness 
there is very little possibility for her to understand the Dharma, the teachings, or to create enough kar karmic energy that propels her to become human again. Okay? So, I was very emotional when I thought about it because my thoughts were, what if Yuri, in fact, in, in, in a previous life, life, life form or a previous lifetime, was a criminal that, that had a problem that, that, that did serious that did a serious crime to my to my previous life form so in a previous time yuri and i were were enemies probably and let's say she murdered and she killed me in that particular life form and in that particular life form i was i was her i was her victim and she was the the entity or being that committed a very serious uh, act in which the karma caused her to become move from being human to a dog. So if Yuri were, I know this is funny, right? But the, the question is, if if this fur fur baby I have in my arms right now is murdered the, my my past life form. How, how should I be treating my, my dog at this point? Should I continue being kind and loving? Or should she experience the, the suffering she inflicted upon me in the previous, in the previous life? Right? So obviously everything is, is, is in a constant flux. Everything is in constant change. Our consciousness uh, obviously... Um, fluctuate from having very profound insights of uh, of spirituality, of, of consciousness, and uh, really reaching maybe like mystical level of experiences. And the next moment, we're just baseline animals and who have no control of over our desires. So. The, the point I'm trying to make is where where does or what actually determines uh, um, especially when you are in a non-human form like this little one over here so that conditions might allow her to become human again uh, every day I actually let my two dogs Yuri and Maru Join me, listen to I chant the Heart Sutra of Buddhism, the the very famous Heart Sutra of Zen, especially the the favorite chant of of the most Mahayana schools. The uh, and um, and I'm hoping that in in my my dogs listening to the Heart Sutra, they will somehow. Uh, have a deepening, however, which way it is possible that their consciousness will deepen in, in listening to the Heart Sutra, right? See, she's so behaved. So, does this mean that if a dog is very behaved in, in this life, becomes or transcends her being a dog and evolves and rebirths, and rebirths into a human or a monkey? I don't know, right? Okay, so the next point I want to make is if in fact my my pet over here was a really horrible human being in her past life, shouldn't how how will she remember those acts of atrocity she committed to other other sentient beings? How will she ask for forgiveness how will she feel remorse for what she has done if as a dog first she doesn't really have the cognitive ability to reflect upon wrongdoings although if i if yuri like you know she bites my slippers or takes some food from the table when she's not supposed to and i look at her 
and she knows she's done something wrong. But beyond that, I doubt any dog uh, can remember, can, can actually feel remorse for something they've done a few days ago, a week ago, a year ago, let alone lifetimes ago. So how are they able to atone for, for the evil, for the evils they've done if they were an evil person in, the, in, a, previous, in a previous life form? So that's, that's what made me like almost become very teary-eyed because that's kind of unfair. Because how will, how will you, if you were, if it became, if your collective consciousness and karmic energies to this lifetime caused you to become a dog in the next life, and, you, and already as being human, it is very difficult to, to get to the point where we actually even become sorry for most of the evil things we've done or even the bad things we've done, let alone a dog, a cat, or a lower life form, like an insect, an ant, right? That's my second point, right? And it, it, it's made me become very questioning of how, how, we, how the cycle of samsara, or the wheel of death and rebirth, really function in that particular context. Because... I would like to think that in the grand design of things, whether it is in um, Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, Judaism, etc., that whoever designed, whoever whatever designed the rules that we, the entire universe or multiverse follows is a fair one. So if you really consider the point I've made in the second uh, position I, me I mentioned. There is no fairness there because how, how will a dog or other animals be able to atone for mis misdeeds in a previous life and become human again in, this, in the next life? Right. So, my third point uh, in this talk today is Buddha nature. So the koan or the topic that my Zen sensei that gave me to reflect on in, in my pursuit of becoming awake is the koan mu. The koan mu is about a monk asking a very famous Zen, enlightened Zen master, Joshu, if a dog actually has Buddha nature or not. And Joshua replied to the monk, Mu. Right? So I've come to deepen on some level what I sense Mu is because I think Buddha nature is what is intrinsically the most or the deepest part of all of us. So that in the context of rebirth, of life and death, I, I sense that among other things, especially the consciousness and the karmic energies that perpetuate into the next life and continue the cycle, is that there is the Buddha nature that transcends the wheel of samsara itself, which is what I believe is the only thing that kind of evens the playing field. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, yes, Yuri is a dog now, and she might not be aware of her past life and the things she did in her past life, so... So if she was a bad person in her past life and she's a dog now, the underlying Buddha nature in Yuri and in all things is what actually ensures that 
however which way we progress in the the path of spirituality is covered by rules that are fair governed by an, an overarching spirituality that allows us even as an incognitive uh, creature like a dog to be able to somehow attain higher forms of being uh, in, a, in a succeeding life. So that's basically my my talk today. I, I questioned the the teaching of uh, the teachings of rebirth, and I tried to provide my my own answer by by citing Buddha nature as what could the possible answer be. So let me know your thoughts and your own ideas and insights on the comment section below. My good friend, Neo Magnon, I look forward to hearing your thoughts on today's talk. This is Rafi Gutierrez and my fur baby, Yuri, saying thank you for listening and sharing and commenting in this channel, Usapang Religion, and I look forward to seeing you in the next Crossroads of Faith episode. Maraming salamat po. Gosh, show.